time to do some unboxing. I have a postcard here from Steve. A drawing. Though the line may be long and unpredictable, it eventually creates a perfect loop. Sounds a lot like life to me. Thanks for the great show. Thank you, Steve. I don't know if you made this piece of art, or because this looks like a homemade postcard, but anyway, congratulations if you did, and thanks for sending the postcard. We have a couple of envelopes to open up here. This one is from our buddy Mitchell. Mitchell, I'm afraid this opened up a lot in the mail. I hope nothing in here spilled out. Hicks from California, Maryland. What? California, Maryland. Or Missouri. Oh, man. The postcard did a number on this, Mitchell. I hope it's okay. Probably California, Missouri. That seems like more of a place. Mitchell is written on this kind of puffy paper here. Hey, Matt, just letting you know, in addition to this CD, I have two more vinyls on the way. Ooh, cool. One is like a metal version of Ghost and Vodka. The other's name is how solemnly i can't read that <laughs> i don't have nom for it all oh, here so that will just have to be a surprise your friend mitchell thinking of you we've got a little sentimental card here and inside oh it's uh ghosts and vodka precious blood on cd oh i can play this in the car i that's great i've chosen to continue writing in pen for reasons I must keep to myself. Okay, Charlie Brown. <laughs> so the Ghosts and Vodka record has four tracks that were digital only. Uh, there you go. Thinking of you. Okay, this is from Chris H. in California, Missouri. Hey, good looking. You here to break me out? Or break me in? When you expire, you can only leave one film behind to give others a sense of who you are. What film do you bequeath unto the world? I'm afraid I don't have an answer for that. I have an answer for that, but I'm saving it for a viewer question. But it's Blue Velvet. So there. Yeah, so you're, you're a nitrous huffing freak. There's more than one character in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, so you're Laura Dern, is that it? <laughs> When you go to welcometothebasementshow.com, there are PayPal donation buttons that you can support this show by clicking on with a rolling monthly donation or a one-time donation. Here's a list of our rolling monthly donors. John, Carelock Services, Jared, Jeremy, Tiffany, Tabitha, Jenny, Mark, Ruben, Talia, Danielle, Paul, Jorge, Stephen, Jerry, Kendall, Robert, Amy, Jonathan, Andrew, Brandon, William, The Factory Boys, Malcolm, and Charles. Thank you. We'll be hearing the names of the rest of our donors later on in the show. You guys send us questions, and this is the point of the show where we answer a couple of them. Caffeine Advocate. Do either of you fellows ever do themed movie nights involving food? A western with cowboy food or whiskey, medieval film with a big turkey haunch, etc. I've done this once when I watched the movie Tempopo. I already knew going into it that it was the ultimate food movie, and I knew I was going to have to have a bowl of ramen if I was going to watch that movie. And so I had... I had ramen, I had pot stickers, I had all kinds of food. My question is from Mark Hutton, and it's a follow-up to Chris's question from before. What fictional movie character do you relate to most? Jeffrey Beaumont in the movie of Blue Velvet. Uh, I saw that movie when I was just about to go to college, and so I was within a year or two of Jeffrey Beaumont's age. Just his excitement of life, of the fear of what's going on on the other side of town, but wanting to go there to find out. I have felt like I've been in analogs of the back seat of Frank Booth's car at any number of occasions in my life, but it came out a lot better than he did. How Lynch films that movie is how I saw life in, um, when, in, you know, when I was 18 years old. So going back to watch it is reminding me who I am. Also, I was cleaning up the basement before and I saw this envelope from Jackson that we opened last time and... I happen to look inside. I don't think we noticed this on the oh, inside. Oh, hey. So thank you for that. I always check the envelopes before I throw them away. Okay, I have no idea who this is from. Polyphia. It's got this kind of, it's got a fancy writing on it. <laughs> Title of the album is New Levels, New Devils. Hardcore because the tigers have wings. You can't protect yourself from a tiger with wings. This person has not included a note, but they have sent what looks like a bunch of vintage postcards. These are pretty cool looking. We have this large postcard of this uh, St. Cloud High School Bulldog Band. I'll throw that one. And a bunch of other ones. I can't go through all this. Ooh, this is Chief Joseph. Ah, he will fight no more forever. I went to his gravesite. Cavalry Assembly of God, Kissimmee, Florida. Ooh, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. That's a cool one. See, they are great. And then we have a trio of soundtracks here on vinyl. We've got Neil Diamond, the jazz singer, today. The movie is 
bad. But the soundtrack, if you not like, if you like Neil Diamond, it's all quality stuff. Oh, this is a classic, The Godfather. Mm. Ray Parker Jr. Chart Buster. <laughs> He's like a Ghostbuster, but he busts charts. Let's check out some Ray Parker Jr. deep cuts. Woman Out of Control. Uh oh. Invasion. I've been digging you. <laughs> and of course, Christmas time is here. Oh, good. There's something strange in on the, the music of... chart. Who are you gonna call? Chart Busters! That doesn't say Godzilla. That's funny writing. Not cool, Matt. <laughs> But unfortunately, there are three people that no one likes. It's a living thing. Going crazy on the beach. Very franchisable. This is the worst production of Cyrano de Bergerac I've ever seen. It's even worse than that. They're doing a production of Neil Simon's Barefoot in the Park. <laughs> You're all familiar with that film that's coming out in 40 years? Richard Attenborough's in it. You know him. He's alive right now. <laughs> Here comes McHale's Navy. <laughs> the oh. wackiest Navy on the ocean. They'll take care of the beast. Come to Tokyo labor. Comes to Tokyo lamber. Well, somebody comes to Tokyo, but I don't think it's Godzilla quite quite yet. Oh, Harbor! Yes, he does make it to Tokyo Harbor. Oh, I am beat. This has been quite a day. I got I gotta go, you guys. You really make a murderous beast feel welcome. I get a lot of records in our P.O. box, and I like to listen and talk about them. These are a couple of old favorites. I've listened to these many, many times. First off, we have Elvis Costello, All This Useless Beauty. This is one of his later period 90s albums. And uh, this is notable because it features a lot of songs that he wrote for other musicians. It's got At the Other End of the Telescope, which he wrote with Amy Mann for Till Tuesday, the band. Complicated Shadows, which he wrote for Johnny Cash. You Bow Down, which he wrote for Roger McGuinn. And that is why that song features the 12-string guitar. That's what McGuinn... McGuinn that's what McGuinn... That's McGuinn, what... McGuinn. That's what... That's what the guy played. <laughs> Roger McGuinn... This has a lot of really great songs in it. Actually, I think You Bowed Down is one of my favorite Elvis Costello songs. And the title track on this one I, I'm enamored with. And then, of course, we have The Pogues, If I Should Fall From the Grace of God. I've been listening to this album for decades. Every inch a king. An Irish king. Uh, oh, Fairy Tale of New York. The best Christmas song. That song makes me cry. I've learned how to play it on the, on the, on the ukulele. And I thought I should play this for people, but whenever I try to sing it out loud, I cannot sing the last part of the song. <laughs> this song was ruined for me. How so? And I'm very upset that that happened. I used to have a roommate in college. He, um, he was a close talker. He was a smoker. And he had terrible personal hygiene. And he loved to sing along to that song every time it came on. And he would do it usually about this far from my face. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm sorry. And, of course, he would do the accents and do the... And I, I just got to really hate that song because of him. Mm. And also, I feel like I've heard it a thousand times. I don't know. Hey, we have more donors to talk about their names with. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent, Sarah, Vance, Derek, Carson, Daniel, Krista, Jacob, Maurizio, James, Michael, Dan, Alexander... Eden Graham, Christopher Corey, Joe Waka Records, and things. Thank you. This is from B. Haggerty in Laramie, Wyoming. Never had a box of such a shape. Not from Laramie. Seems like maybe it has a can of peanut brittle in it. Could happen. This is another mystery package. We don't know who sent this to us. And <laughs> we don't know what it is. <laughs> This is either going perfectly or horribly for the people in this situation. I believe that the band is Harmlessness, and the title of the album is The World is a Beautiful Place and I'm No Longer Afraid to Die. Could be the other way around there. Yeah, there's nothing about that album cover that looks harmless. <laughs>
Even the woman isn't looking where she's running. Such tracks as, you can't live there forever. Wendover, we need more skulls. <laughs> Haircuts for everybody. All right, Burns says, I am sending you some Wyoming postcards and candy as a thanks for helping me ditch cable TV and learn about cinema. Please continue your essential work. Thank you, Burn. Let's check out these postcards first. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to learn all about Wyoming. Ah. Wyoming. Why not Oming? Wyoming. Those guys, these these weird shaped sheep birds they have out there. Wyoming. Wyoming wildflowers. Wyoming wildlife. Wyoming. And to change things up a little bit, Wyoming. My last road trip I went on that I recall was through Wyoming. Oh. This is a sack from D's Candy Shop, Cheyenne, Wyoming. What are I they? don't know what they are. Are they licorice or are they not terish? I'm going to sneak one under my mask. They look like they're candy versions of an Othello game. Oh, golly. Come on. Don't make it hard. Yeah, it's a hard licorice candy. All right. Tasty. If only I liked black licorice. Well, as I enjoy this candy that Burns so thoughtfully sent us, I'm going to thank you for joining us here on the show. Of course, always. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for having me. Wyoming.